All right, we have Northwestern head coach Chris Collins. Once again, if you have questions, we'll start with an opening statement from coach, then we'll go to questions. If you have one, just raise your hand. We'll get a microphone to you. Please give name and affiliation before asking your question. But coach, if you want to start with an opening statement. Yeah, I appreciate everybody coming out. Um, feel fortunate and, and excited to be here today. Um, playing in the NCAA tournament is awesome. Being able to come out with an overtime win last night um, was really proud of our group. Thought we we did a lot of great things against a tremendous team to get to this point. And the last, you know, not 24 hours, but the last 18 hours or so, we've been diving in to get ready for UConn. And um, you know, I've I I have so much admiration for for what Danny's has is doing and has done with that program. Um, the way he runs his program. He and I have known each other forever. I played with Bobby uh, in college. So I've, I've known the Hurley family since I've been 18 years old. And, um, you know, they've been nothing but great to me and recruited some of Danny's guys when he was a high school coach. And he and I have always been very good friends. And I think we, you know, we have a lot of similarities. You know, both of us grew up around basketball. We're coaches, kids. Um, you know, and and have been around the game, so I've I've always enjoyed kind of talking to him. Uh, I think we've had similar upbringings, and um, you kind of coach in similar manners. So to have an opportunity to compete against this program and against his team, which to me has been as good as any, not you know over the past couple of years in the country, is going to be a great honor and and definitely a, a challenge that is going to be tough for us, but one I think our guys are excited about seeing what we can do. All right, we'll start right here in the front row on this side of the room. Hey, Chris, um, going back to when you were recruiting Ryan, what was your message to him about playing his fifth year with North, Northwestern? And um, in this moment specifically, how much is his experience combined with the experience of Boo um, and, and everybody else that played against UCLA last year valuable? Well, I think when we were recruiting Ryan, um, you know, there was a great opportunity for him to jump into a key role on a team that we felt could be really good. You know, we, when you're a grad transfer a lot, you, you wanna play with other older guys. You know, you have one year left. It's not this, you're not a part of this multi-year rebuild. You got one year to play. You wanna be on a winning team. You wanna have a big role and you wanna be around guys that you fit in with. And I thought we checked the box of all those things. We had a huge need for what he brought, um, his ability to shoot and make plays at the guard position, his experience playing in the NCAA tournament. And we told him, we felt like if he joined, that we would be back. And I know that was something that was important to him. Um, uh, it was to be able to, and then when he came, he just fits so well with our guys. And his experience last year, I think you saw it last night. I mean, I, I don't know, after having the first half that he and the rest of our team had, we couldn't throw it in the ocean. But he played in three NCAA tournament games last year. He kind of understood the moment, understood the situation. He stayed with it. He kept being aggressive, kept taking his shots. And, and then obviously he got really hot in the second half in overtime. So I think that's where you saw the experience really come out. We're going to stay on that same side, row four. Yeah, go ahead. Chris, uh, when you played, how did Coach K address and handle complacency? Um, Coach was always so good mentally with our teams. You know, I, I thought um, he was as good as it got with, with always creating motivation, you know, day to day, not year to year motivation, but daily motivation. You know, ways to keep our teams on their toes, ways to make sure that guys weren't in a position to ever get complacent about anything, especially if they had won a lot. You know, we had been on winning streaks, championships, whatever it may be. He, he had an amazing ability for, because of his fire and his competitive nature to really draw that in to us as players where, you know, the moment you you relax for one second, he was he was going to be all over that and make sure that we got back to being, you know, the team we needed to be. And, and it was something that I really learned from him. I was with him four years as a player, 13 as a coach. So 17 years of my life, you know, being around his leadership and his team building skills and his ability to motivate. You know, there, there's probably not a day that goes by that something that I do doesn't relate to something he did with one of our players, you know, at Duke in, uh, in terms of motivating or building teams. I'm, I'm always drawn upon those experiences and what, with what I'm doing in Northwestern. We'll go to the other side of the room. We're in row two right now. Hey, Coach, David Gold, inside on you. Throughout the year, especially when you play big guys like Zach Eady, you talked a lot about employing all 15 fouls you had with your big men. Do you plan on a similar strategy going into Klingon tomorrow? And if so, 
with Matt out? Where do those extra 5,000 come from? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I think we have to be a little bit smarter. You know, I mean, it's, uh, uh, we don't have the bodies and the depth to be able to say, just take a bunch of fouls on him. Um, we have to be smart. We have to use our bodies. We have to be physical. Um, you know, I think what makes this team so dangerous, though, is Klingon is a great, great player, but all of a sudden, if you sell everything out on trying to take him away, you're going to get killed by the rest of the team. They have so much balance. I mean, five guys averaging in double figures, you know, multi, multiple guys who can shoot, multiple guys who can play and pick and roll, make plays. They're very unselfish. So, I mean, that's what makes them so good is you can't really just say we're going to stop one guy. And we have to do a good job against Klingon. we got to make sure our body's on him at all times, take away his, his ability to roll as a lob threat. And then when he does get it into the paint, we have to be really in, in tune with our, with our doubling schemes and rotations because they, they got other great players as well that can burn you. We'll stay in this row two and then stay with row two. Go ahead. Coach Bradley Locker inside, and you, when Rick Pitino was asked about playing UConn, I don't know if you saw the quote, he said, you know, six of their players got COVID. It's, I don't know, what, what kind of goes into preparing for a team like this, and do you think something similar needs to happen for you guys to have a chance out there? Um, I'm not going to say that. I mean, if look, they're the best team in the country. They've earned that. You know, are they, do they have more talent top to bottom than us? Probably so. But I think what's beautiful about the, the, the NCAA tournament is – it's one game. You know, if we had to play them in a best of seven, we're not going to win a series. That's just the reality. You know, they're the better team across the board. But that doesn't mean on one night you can't put it together. I mean, that's what's great about basketball. You know, can we on one night put 40 minutes together where we're really dialed in, where we can execute, where we can make some shots, where we can somewhat slow down, you know, their juggernaut offensively? Um, you know, that's, that's the challenge, one game, you know, and, and our guys are excited about that opportunity. I, I hope playing in our league, you know, we played Purdue twice, we played Illinois twice, you know, we played, and I'm not saying those teams are UConn, but they're, they're teams that people feel can be national championship contenders in final, and, and we won two of those four games. So, you know, our, guy, our guys, they, they're relishing the opportunity. They, they, we have great respect for UConn, um, but we're, we're going to compete. You know, we're, we're going to come and we're going to compete. We're going to try to be us. We're going to be confident. We're going to do what we do. And, and let's see what happens tomorrow night. We're going to stay in row two, then we'll go back over the other side of the room. Right here, row two. Yeah, you shared a while, Daniel. Question. Coach, you kind of mentioned Purdue just now, but having beaten Purdue, a number one team in Purdue in back-to-back -back seasons, how does that give you sort of added confidence as you prepare for another number one team in UConn? Yeah, I mean, I think playing really good teams um, – you know, our, our guys, we've played in tough venues. We've played great teams. Again, UConn is as good as any of them. I mean, arguably, they're the best team in the country. I mean, I, I've watched them from afar. I, I marvel at the, the team they've had and how they play together and how tough they are and competitive and they show up every night. And their balance, like I said, their balance is, is really something um, to admire. Um, but again, playing a Big Ten schedule, um, we played all the best teams in our league two times. You know, all the teams that played in the tournament this year, we played them all twice. So um, we've played really good teams. We've played great opponents. And you can't worry about that. I mean, this is one game. Like, you, you have to go out there and just play. You, you got to compete. You can't – if you're on your heels because of who UConn is, then we have no chance. And, and that's not the attitude we have to take. We have to come in believe, believing we can compete, believing that we can win. Like I said, in one game, it's not, it's not the NBA. It's not a seven-game series. It's one game. You know, can we put it together for 40 minutes and give ourselves a chance to get late in the game and, and have a chance to, to win it? We'll go to the other side of the room in row three. Coach, uh, Matt Sheldon, Wildcat Report. Um, this is the third time in your career you've been in the situation of playing a top two seed on short prep. How do those past experiences against UCLA and Gonzaga help shape your preparation for this game? Yeah, I think any time you can get experience in anything, it's helpful. You know, and I, I think for our guys, a lot of our key guys went through last year where we won a tough game against Boise State and then had to turn around and play UCLA, you know, 48 hours later. Um, so they're kind of familiar with how the timing works. 
Um, you know, playing in the evening hopefully will help. It's a little bit more prep time. You know, we will have all day today. We'll have an opportunity tomorrow to do a little bit more prep and walk through. And at the end of the day, though, this time of year, you know, I think you got to be careful to over coaching and over preparing. You know, I think you got to stay true to who you are, your principles, what you do well. Um, if you, I, I think like if you overload your guys with too much information, um, it can paralyze them a little bit. You know, and it can it can get them on their heels and a step slower. We we have to be us. You know, we got to do what we do. We we got to try to do it at maybe the highest level we've done it all year long. Um, our defense has to be on point. Um, this is a team that scores a lot of points and they go on runs. They're so explosive. So I think our ability to 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 not allow them go on the 18 to two run. You know, the 20 to four run. You know, that's when they get away from people and then. You know the game, for all intents and purposes, gets away from you. So we gotta we gotta stay within arm's distance and and try to stem their runs. And to do that, you gotta defend, and then you gotta score. We're gonna have to find enough offense. I've said this, you guys, some of you guys who follow us um, in our league, like the Illinois and the Purdue's. You know those games that we won, we scored a lot of points. Like this team is so prolific offensively. Offensively, like you're not gonna hold them to 50 points. You know, they're, they're going to score. So, I mean, we're going to have to find a way offensively. Like, we're not, you know, we got away with it yesterday. We only had 19 at half. Like, that, that's not going to work. Like, we're going to have to uh, make shots. We're going to have to execute. We're going to have to put the ball in the hole a little bit if we're going to have to, if we're going to want to give ourselves a chance tomorrow night. Okay, we're back on this side of the room in the last row. Just raise your hand so Coach knows. Go ahead. Coach Mike Fitzpatrick from AP. Uh, you mentioned UConn's balance. It, you know, all, all of us can see – you know, some of their attributes that they have, their size, their speed, their some very accurate long-range shooters, their ability in transition. But there's a lot of talented teams that have not been as consistent and overpowering as they've been for the last all season and going mm -hmm. back to the tournament. Sure. What is it about them that maybe only, you know, that a coach would, only a coach can see that, that makes them like that? Not just a talented team that, you know, is up and down here and there, but is, you know, night after night is on point. Well, I, I think really it's a direct result of them following the personality of their coach. You know, really that's who Danny is. You know, Danny has done an amazing job, you know, getting those, a, a talented group, a collection of guys to really buy in to each other, you know, to play as a team, to be unselfish, to not really care who scores, to move the ball, find the right shots. You know, it's very apparent, you know, they're a very together group and they're a tough competitive group. You know, and when I say say those characteristics, you think of their coach. So, I mean, I, I think that Danny sets the tone with that, his leadership, uh, his ability to mold his program and his personality um, is really impressive. And, you know, I think his players are just an extension, extension of who he is. You know, and that's probably the best way I can describe it. We'll go down. We'll start on the aisle here in row three. Hey, Chris, Mike Crispino, UConn Sports Network. Uh, getting back to the, the sons of coaches like you are, how much do you talk to your dad about this stuff? Do you, do you talk daily? Do you talk specifics? <laughs> what are those conversations like? Yeah, I mean, we look, our whole lives we talked, you know, and, and we've shared a love of ball. I mean, I've been in the gym since I've been two years old, and I could walk and stand tagging along the same way Danny has. I mean, we're, we have such a great friendship through our love of basketball. I mean, we have our father-son relationship, but, you know, we're always talking about the game, you know, or, and other games. And, you know, do you see this? Do you see that? I think the one thing my dad has done a great job for me is he doesn't really focus on X's and O's stuff. He focuses on the big picture. You know, for him, he, he was able to coach four NBA teams and all the all the situations he took over, they were they were not great situations when he took them over. Kind of similar to what I took over at Northwestern. So it was more, okay, how do you build a winning culture? How do you build a winning mindset? You know, the the psychological things with your players. How do I get the most out of this guy? What do you need to do? He's been such a great resource with that, um, and he's like the grandfatherly figure to my team. You know, it's awesome. He, you know, my dad's been in the the game for almost 50 years in the NBA as a player, played in the Olympics as a coach, coaching Jordan, you know, all the experiences that he's had a chance, lead broadcaster for so many years. 
it's so awesome for me. One of my favorite times is when he comes to a practice and watches and he kind of just lets it all settle. And then when practice is over, our guys go and huddle around him and he just is holding court, you know, with his basketball experiences. And that's really cool for me to, to be able to share that with him. And um, we've had such an amazing relationship through the game our whole lives. And it's special to have him be able to come to my games and, and watch my teams compete. We'll come up here on this side in row two. Coach, you saw Cam Spencer twice last year when he was at Rutgers. Maybe not turning back on that tape, but how much you reference what you guys did against him when he was in New Jersey to maybe attack him tomorrow, although I know the systems are different now that he's with Dan Storrs. Yeah, I mean, I love Cam. I mean, he uh, you guys know, I mean, I love the Spencer family. You know, we, we gave Pat an opportunity right off the lacrosse field, you know, when no one else would. You know, we just – because of the mindset, I mean, I just love how both of those guys are wired. They're just tough, competitive, confident guys that that work hard. And Cam has become a terrific player, man. I mean, he starting out at Loyola, going to Rutgers, what he did there, now coming here to the biggest stage at UConn and what he's done. He's He gives them an edge. You know, I think the one thing about him that's really good, you know, he wasn't a part of that team last year. So there's a hunger with him to want to win it you know, because he didn't get a chance to taste that, the Final Four and the championship. And I think he's given them a little bit of an edge with his personality and his confidence. He, he's a terrific shooter, very smart player. I think underrated with the ball, you know, good passer, you know, plays within himself. And as, now that he's playing with the talent base, he's, you know, he becomes even more dangerous because you can't really load up on him either, you know. But you have to do a great job of understanding the things he does really well. You got to get into his airspace. You can't give him catch and shoot threes, and then you can't overrun it too because he's the ability to get in the paint and find find uh, find shooters and make plays for others as well. We'll stay in row up on that. Um, Pat Spencer made his NBA debut a couple of weeks ago. What I mean for you as a coach, you took a chance <laughs> on him to see him now playing in the big leagues. It's awesome, man. Uh, I'm so proud of Pat. You know, we talk all the time. Um, we were actually texting a little bit yesterday. I know he's mad that the brackets shook out the way they did you know where we were, we got to play against his brother you know he he was with us for one year but his impact was huge especially on boo you know boo was a freshman when pat was with us and i thought pat did a great job kind of showing boo the ropes of what it takes to be a great athlete at the college level and the me mentality and the mindset you have to have and now to see pat like he only played one year of organized ball in college with us and now to see him a, three years later be on an nba roster I mean, what an incredible testament to his work and what an athlete, right? I mean, that's that's just an incredible story. Couldn't be more proud of what he's doing, although I thought his dunk was kind of weak. The other night I told him, I said, you're more athletic than that. You should have, like, windmilled it or something. And he told me he'd been sitting on the floor for two and a half hours, so he's a little stiff. Last two questions will come in row two here. Bradley Locker inside and you know, coach I believe UConn has lost three of his last 41 games kind of a staggering mark but how much will you go back and watch those three contests just to kind of see what has worked for other teams in defeating UConn yeah I think what you try to do as a staff is you get as much information as you can I mean we were all in on our Florida, Florida Atlantic prep at least I was and you know that's why you have a staff we've had other guys that have been working on UConn in case this came to fruition so you know we had a long edit last night we watched a number of games you know, talked about a lot of ideas. Like I said, you, you got to be really careful to make sure, okay, what are some things that might hurt them or might work without deviating too much with what we do because you only have one day prep. So I think that's kind of the challenge. But certainly you, you want to look at teams that have had a little bit of success. Is there any common thread to that? Um, you know, 38-3, and three, though, it's a pretty good record. So, I mean, there haven't been a lot of teams that have had a lot of success, and uh, that's going to be our challenge tomorrow. Final question here in row two. Hey, Coach. Jake Epstein, the Daily Northwestern. How have you seen guys like Nick Martinelli and Luke Hunger be able to step in and embrace this next man up mentality where they're able to play starters, starters minutes on a March Madness team? Yeah, I just think it's the culture of what our program has become. You know, it's, it's something that I'm really proud about. Um, you know, it's, we have a belief that now whoever puts the jersey on that we're going to win. We're going to figure it out. I mean, I was... You know, all those guys, when we got it to overtime, you guys would, in the huddle, I mean, our, our guys just said, we're not losing. You know, we're, we're winning this game. And, and they meant it. You know, sometimes that's, you're just speaking out loud, but you could see it in their eyes. And for those two guys in particular, Nick, once we lost Ty Berry to go from a 15 to 19 a game minute guy to now almost playing the whole game. 
and having more expectation on him to score and defend and do the things as a young player. Same thing with Luke. He redshirted last year with a broken foot. So he's really a freshman, you know. So now all of a sudden you're starting center your freshman year, uh, playing at the bi on the biggest stage against the best players. You know, for him to come out yesterday and get eight points, eight rebounds, four assists, make a couple, make some big free throws. Just really proud of those guys. And it's also a testament to our veteran leadership because I think those guys, they give those guys the confidence they need. When you're out there with older guys that are, that are pumping you up and giving you confidence, I think that there's nothing like that. And that's what our older guys have done for those guys. All right, Coach. Thank you, Thanks guys. Thanks for taking the time. We'll Appreciate see you tomorrow. It.